What's up, bros and gals of the real family? J Will is here, and J Will has seen videos and videos and videos of a huge debate of people like arguing over these two specific TV shows. So I felt that it'd be good good justice to actually let these two shows battle it out. This rendition of the real talk is known as old versus young. And what this rendition is, is it's pretty much a chance for the first adaptation of a movie or television show versus its new adaption. And well, by the end of this review, we'll find out who's the winner. And what are we reviewing today? Well, it's simply known as the two adaptations from the comic book. You know it. You know it. Based on the comic book with, with the same name, Teen Titans lasted for five seasons, bringing a success. And pretty much nearly a decade later, Teen Titans Go! was released. So, without further ado, let's have the, the two fight it out with old versus young. Fight! <laughs> I have to admit, like me and many others my age, this was a really fun show to watch as growing up as a kid. I mean, literally. Every time this theme song plays, it's so catchy, and literally, it just makes me want to get out there and kick some ass! Each season had a great story arc, and the main characters throughout the series were very memorable. And literally, this show just completely kicked ass. And it was no surprise that this show ended up being a success. Which literally ended up leading to nearly 10 years later to its new adaption, Teen Titans Go! With the success of Teen Titans, the new series, when it was announced, was really looked forward to. And well, come on, with how awesome Teen Titans was, I'm sure, I am positive, that the new adaptation is just as good. When there's dodgeball, you know who to call. Teen Titans Go! This adaption is well known as Teen Titans Go, and I must say, what in serious of all God's creation is this? Where the first series had action, drama, and then comedy, this series has comedy, drama, and then just a pinch, just a little bit, just a very microscopic bit of how you can hardly freaking notice of action. Well, Teen Titans Go! isn't really all that bad, but let's wait to talk about that. First, let's talk about 
The first one, Teen Titans. This show, as I said before, was a success and was a hit. The person in the middle is the leader of the Teen Titans, known as Robin. And I swear to God, he is up to the caliber as, as badassery as Wolverine from the first X-Men cartoon series, Batman from the Dark Knight, and Iron Man from the Avengers and other Iron Man movies. I mean, obviously, it's played by Robert Downey Jr., duh. To his left is Starfire. A happy-go-lucky, bubbly girl, kind of like Bubbles from the Powerpuff Girls. Or just that really hyper girl you knew in high school or middle school or elementary school or your next door neighbor. Whatever the case. And is happens to be Robin's love interest throughout the whole part of this series and in Teen Titans Go as well. To Robin's right is the big cool guy known as Cyborg. And he's pretty much that cool guy that is just that really good friend of yours. Really cool man friend you have at school who always just seems to be in a good mood, but knows when to get serious. And Cyborg also proves to be really cool as well. His character is pretty much the same in this one as in Teen Titans Go. The person on the far left is known as Beast Boy. Uh, which is pretty much that, that guy. That guy in your Spanish class when you're going to work, that guy, when ladies, you're just walking down the street, and he's like, what's up, babe? Yee-hee! Yeah, he's pretty much the comic relief of this whole series. And in Teen Titans Go, he's pretty much even more of a comic relief, even though the whole show is already a comedy show, but we'll get to that later. And the girl on the far right is known as Raven. Which, I swear to God, is one of the most badass female superheroes of all time. She's up there with calibers with many others. Like, such as, I don't know, Storm from X-Men, the Phoenix, uh, Black Widow from, uh... I think I'm saying your name right. From the Avengers. The hero that was played by Scarlett Johansson. Um, and she is pretty much the daughter of a demon. And she possesses magic, dark magic powers and can summon spells and other things. By simply just uttering the words Azeroth, Metrion, Synthos. Which is kind of weird. It's just kind of like one spell that can do anything. And which is the one thing about the story I never understood. But okay. Gee, I wish I could utter one word and accomplish anything. But anyway, that's Teen Titans. Or that's the characters of Teen Titans and Teen Titans Go. Now, with this series, the first one, Teen Titans was a success for its well use of, well, it told a very good story, first off. And each season, each season had a story arc, which all connected to each, each other, which was actually, each season was based on a, a specific character in the Teen Titans. The first season was based on Robin, who, who was trying, who took his job way too seriously and trying to find what it really means to be a hero and a leader. But when the Teen Titans had to face their hardest foe yet, known as Slade, who was pretty much the main 
antagonist of the whole series. Robin ends up joining Slade because unknowing to the other Teen Titans, Slade has found a way to kill the other Teen Titans and threatens Robin that if he doesn't work for him that his friends will all die. It works out in the end and the Teen Titans beat Slade and that's pretty much season one. Season two just mainly consists of the story arc based around a new Teen Titan who joins the team named Tara. A blonde female girl who is that one weird country girl we all know and she had the ability to well control earth you know like earth bending and stuff like that and avatar and well the story arc revolved around her and she was also beast boys love interest and well she ended up joining slade in this season and it's pretty much kind of like the last season. It all works out in the end. Terra and the Teen Titans beat Slade and blah blah blah. Season 3 mainly focused on Cyborg and his dreams of becoming a leader and stuff like that. And having to face off against a very new pro an antagonist known as Brother Blood who had the power of mind control. And near the end of the season brother blood ends up gr growing jealous of cyborg and ends up morphing himself into well another version of cyborg and this season was pretty good because cyborg learned that well sometimes no matter how hard something looks, no matter how hard it is, especially with him, even though he was mostly machine, he actually still had so much humanity that it was actually Brother Blood could never truly hypnotize him because his spirit was so strong, his will was so strong. And that was epic. Hitry, is it? It's not the machine that resists you. Teen Titans Go also had Brother Blood in it, and they defeated him in that one as well. But how do they defeat him in Teen Titans Go after such a huge, awesome moral in Teen Titans? You're not annoyed too. Waffles. Oh, come on, you know. Waffles. Waffles. It's not funny. Waffles, waffles, waffles. Can't you see this is the stupidest game ever? <laughs> Thank you.
Oh dear God, no. Cyborg had to use the means of courage and teamwork to beat Brother Blood, but in Teen Titans Go, Cyborg had to learn a lesson in himself to beat Brother Blood, but in Teen Titans Go, Brother Blood couldn't defeat him because of this. His soul was so great that it overpowered the fruits of evil, but it Teen Titans Go! You can't be serious! If I took a dump, and then my best friend took a dump, and then his girlfriend took a dump, and then their next door neighbor took a dump, and then their next door neighbor's cousin's best friend's roommate took a dump, and then Charlie Sheen took a shovel and took all of that, put it into a stove, and then dropped that stove into a huge heaping pile of manure while the oven was set to 300,000 degrees, and then dropped all of it onto the moral that the original series was, uh, was originally doing, that is how much piles of shit has been dropped on. God dang it! Forget it. Forget it. You know what? Forget it. I'm getting way too ahead of myself right now. Let's just go back to talking about the rest of the first series. My God. Anyway, to wrap it up, Season 4 pretty much just revolved around Raven and pretty much her trying to change her fate because she was originally supposed to fulfill this prophecy to resurrect her father, which is a demon named Trigon, to rule over the earth. And she ends up changing her fate, defeating her father, and then season five mainly just <clears throat> revolves around Beast Boy and his backstory of how he used to be part of this super superhero group known as the Doom Patrol. Um, ironic name, guys? I mean, really? The Doom Patrol? Anyway. Also, the story also re revolves around Beast Boy finding a girl who looks exactly like Terra. Well, I guess I forgot to mention, at the end of Season 2, Terra gets the axe. But... In Season 5, Beast Boy finds a girl that looks exactly like Terra. And, well, if you haven't seen it, might as well check it out. I mean, one of the big dramatic things about the Teen Titans series was, well, the love story between Beast Boy and Terra. And if you want a good example, well, check this out. Things changed, Beast Boy. The girl you want me to be is just a memory. Come in, Beast Boy! We need your help! Come with me. You go. You're the Teen Titan. That's who you are. That's not me. I'm not a hero. To save the world. I'm just a girl with a geometry test next period and I haven't studied. Beast Boy to Robin. I'm on my way. Over. Oh god. That is epic. Man, I can't wait to see what happens next. Well, let's have it, Teen Titans. What happens next?
Why did I do this? Why did I do this? <sighs> I'm gonna get a hernia by the end of this review. Yes, the series ended on that note. Season 5 was viewed as the most, well, least likable out of the whole series. It's not that it was bad, it was just, it wasn't as good as the other four. The story arc here was kind of confusing and mostly random. It was shown that, well, executives thought that people might be getting bored with the same superheroes five seasons in a row, so they decided to add like a whole cluster of like all these superheroes teamed up to battle evil. Gee, like that's never been done before. Anyway, the main antagonist of season five was known as the Brain. No. Getting closer. There we go. Yes. This weird looking trash can is known as the Brain, which pretty much, well, all he can really do is just talk. That's literally his only thing. He's just a big metal trash can with a brain inside. Hmm. Now I can see why when he auditioned to be a Dalek in Doctor Who, he got rejected and got placed here. Well, hmm. Don't feel bad, brain. I'm sure that dream will come true someday. Besides the season having a very unintimidating antagonist, the season mainly revolved around the Teen Titans just meeting other superheroes and trying to get them to help them fight the Brotherhood of Evil and their leader, the Brain. It turned out to be very random at this point. And there are even some that didn't make sense. There was one episode in Season 5 that revolved around the Teen Titans meeting this, well, this superhero in Russia who had the power of, uh, I don't know, his powers were very confusing. He, like, shot out radioactive blasts from his body or something like that. But anyway, he gets the axe at the end of the episode, exploding in a huge nuclear explosion. Not that I mind the whole idea of, like, a huge cluster of superheroes teaming up to battle evil. In fact, it seems pretty badass. I mean, it's done in the Justice League, and the Avengers, and the X-Men, and probably many others. But, you know, I mean, looking at this picture right here, it doesn't look to- wait. Wait, stop, stop. Is that- the guy on the left, is that the... Are you serious? Are you freaking serious storytellers of this freaking series? Okay, this picture is the next to last episode. And if, if, if I'm looking at this picture correctly, I mean, if unless I'm losing my vision to see, um, I'm pretty sure that's the Russian guy right there. I'm pretty sure that's the Russian guy. Uh, now, let, let me count back. Like, about... No, 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 no. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Eight. Eight episodes ago, this guy died. I'm really sure you died. L let me see this. Like... Yeah, yeah. That. How? I don't care who you are. I don't even know how, in the name of all God's creation, how you could possibly survive something like that. I'm surprised that the Teen Titans, when they saw him teaming up with them to fight the Brotherhood of Evil, they were like, I, I highly doubt they were just like, 
Oh! What's up, dude? Yeah, come on, let's fight. No, 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 no. If, if it was real life, if I was one of the Teen Titans, and this guy came, like, back after something like that, I would be like, holy shit, how are you still living? What, do you have another superpower where you can, like, morph into a cockroach or something? What the serious fuck? I mean, literally, uh, okay, you know what, forget it, forget it, I am, I, I am done with this series, I am done, let's just move on to Teen Titans Go, just forget it. Oh, good lord, just looking at this picture, great, I think this is going to be a lot worse, uh, this is Teen Titans Go, well, it's really not all that bad. It's pretty much the same characters, but it's a different ad adaption to Teen Titans. And where, like, I know, I know, I shouldn't be mad at this series because, you know, many other series like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, how many freaking television shows have just spawned out of nowhere, just starting the whole thing over. And pretty much this is just starting the Teen Titans story all over again. And yeah, I can get that. What I don't get, though, is that if this is supposed to be a new look at Teen Titans, then why in the hell... Do you use the same voice actors as in the other series to portray these characters in this series? Are you trying to give them the same identity they had in the other one as characters? Because I'm not feeling it in this one. I mean, really. Just, just, why? <sighs> Many people were expecting this series to pick up where the last one ended off. <laughs> nope, screw that idea. There is no continuality at all from the last series. And this one, like I said, starts off new. And, well, with a new series like this, unlike the last series, which each episode was 30 minutes long, this series, each episode is only 10 minutes long. Good God. Even a less running time than Robot Chicken. How? <sighs> and unlike the other series, Teen Titans Go! focuses more on comedic aspects, like dark satires and such. Kind of like Robot Chicken, in a way. Now... I don't really mind it, and this series really isn't that bad, because, in fact, despite the fact that a lot of the fans from the last series were looking forward to this series, this series really wasn't made for those fans, it was really made for a younger audience, for kids. Which I can understand, and I can agree that this is a really good show for kids. I mean... In a way, some of the jokes they have in this are kind of crude. But, let's let's look at this. I mean, in comparison, this is a battle after all. So, let's compare. Let's look at the plot um, of the first episode of each of these series. Okay. Let's look. Okay. In Teen Titans, the plot line for the first episode reads like this. Teen Titans, episode one. The final exam. The Teen Titans have to face off against a group of villains known as the Hive, consisting of Gizmo, Jinx, and Mammoth. The Hive takes over Teen Titans Tower, and the Titans have to have to break back into their tower, fight the Hive, and reclaim their home. Alright, sounds pretty epic. Alright. 
Well, let, let's look at Teen Titans Go. All right. Teen Titans Go, Episode 1. The plot line reads as this. Raven is annoyed that the Teen Titans will not leave her alone while she's trying to watch My Little Pony. So, in order to get them out of the tower, she tells them all this lie and fib that there are great sorceries of magic out there in the world to make the world's greatest sandwich. Huh. Well, that seems pretty... Are you freaking kidding me? Seriously! You... Uh, uh, okay, okay. Let me get this straight. L let me get this straight, Teen Titans Go. Okay. Raven, you are comparing a daughter... No, 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 no. You are comparing a girl who was birthed, who was conceived, who came out of a demon to... Does the age demographic of which the show that you are portraying to even know what a brony is? I mean, seriously. And to top it all off, how do you think the bronies feel? I mean, do you think they like to be compared to a demon? I mean, really. Are you trying to say that bronies are now a satanic cult? Good lord. I mean, uh, okay, uh, enough about that. Enough of this. Let's just continue on with this re review. Good God. I haven't been reviewing this series for five minutes, and I'm already annoyed. Well, despite that, the show actually does have something really good in it. Yeah, believe it or not. Where in, as in the other series, Teen Titans, Beast Boy's love interest was Terra... In this series, Beast Boy's love interest is Raven, kind of staying true to the comic book. And, well, in Teen Titans, they kind of showed a hint that something would have happened between those two, but the series got cancelled, so I guess it never happened. I think that if Teen Titans would have continued the series and not get cancelled, we probably would have seen Beast Boy and Raven hook up. Just like Starfire and Robin did in the end of the series. But, if you want an example, just like I gave you an example of Beast Boy and Terra, just look, just look how adorable this is in Teen Titans Go. Go away. Raven, it takes two to make a relationship work. We don't have a relationship. Give it up. I have never given up on anything in my life. And I am not giving up on us. What are you talking about? You give up all the time. I give up. If you can give me one reason we're not meant to be together, I'll walk away right now. Hmm, well, you're rude, you smell, you're annoying, you say bro and do too much, I hate the color green, your voice irritates me, tofu makes me sick, you're irresponsible, all you do is play video games, you can't die a tie, you're messy, you chew with your mouth open, your face gives me the creeps, your jokes are dumb, your pranks are stupid, your dancing embarrasses me, you're lazy, you're dumber than the animals you turn into, your clothes are always covered in pizza stains. Wow, no one's ever known me like you do. <laughs> That is just precious. A lot of fans have found that one of the most interesting things about this series is the love story between Beast Boy and Raven. And, I mean, it's pretty much very comedic, and a lot of antics happen. Like, for instance, in the series, in one of the episodes, they nearly get married. Um... Well, that escalated quickly. And, well, for the series alone, most people believe that literally the only good thing about this show that holds any interest is the love story between these two. And most of us would agree. For Teen Titans, for what it is, 
just a kick-ass show about a bunch of teenagers kicking ass, it succeeds at its job of, well, being kick-ass. And for Teen Titans Go! for being what it is, a comedic show for kids, well, it succeeds at its job, being a funny comedic show for kids. And yeah, it has its flaws, but it still is a pretty good show for kids, and I can understand why a lot of people still like it. Because it does have a lot of funny moments. And literally, you gotta admit, Beast Boy and Raven are cute. Well, before I announce the winner of this battle, I, well, since this is a review, I first have to give my rating of both the TV shows. So, let's start with Teen Titans. <clears throat> with a show being as it is, Teen Titans, I give it the rating of... Epic. Well, it's really good, but it falls just a little short of badassery. Mainly because of just, well, there are a few plot holes here and there, and there were a lot of things I would have liked, I would have liked, and a lot of the fans I would, I've heard from like to see more of in that series. And the ending, how the series ended, uh, it was actually a disappointment, really. But a lot of TV shows end up that way, sadly. But on a Teen Titans Go, with what it is, mm, it's not bad. But for Teen Titans Go, I give it the rating of... Meh. Well, now that I've given the ratings of the two, the winner of this fight between old and young, well, it's kind of obvious at this point, especially considering looking at the ratings both of them have, the winner of old versus young is the old. Well, that'll do it for this review of Teen Titans. Whatever you want to see me review next on The Real Talk, just let me know in the comments below. And that'll do it. J. Will is here, and J. Will is going to go serenade some babies with some Spanish, with my Spanish accent and some Spanish music. Until next time, throw your fists in the air and thrust them like a big bear. Do it like a big bear. Grrr.